So I'm watching a bunch of NBA stuff last night, and I tend to watch. I get home at about 4.30, and I watch NBA stuff, and the Lakers were a mess, came back, lost, blah, blah, blah. And I'm starting to hear this with LeBron. Shut the season down. Disaster. Rest your body. There's no wins here. There are two big things, very positive things, happening for LeBron James this year. Forget the Lakers, LeBron James. I'll get to that in a second. This year, as big as a mess as it is, doesn't affect him. He's got four titles with three teams. Nobody's ever done that. Um, Got $800 million net worth, close to a billion. His legacy is set. He's either the first or second best player of all time. You're not going to remember this year. It's going to disappear into the ether. Marlon Brando had seven great movies, as many duds. We never talk about the duds. Ever. You know what video you never see? Brett Favre with the Jets. Joe Namath with the Rams. Michael Jordan's last two years with the Wizards were an abject disaster. He went from averaging 29 in games, shooting 47% and the best player in the world with the Bulls. A couple years later, he plays for the Wiz. Teammates hate him. He's no longer vertical. 21 points, shooting 43% from the field. Could not make the playoffs. In the NBA, Michael Jordan. Can't find the video. I mean, he disappeared into the ether. So do all of Marlon Brando's bombs. Johnny Unitas for the Chargers. Can't find the video. I mean, even even Joe Montana with the Chiefs, and he was pretty good. Can't find it. Nobody talks about it. It doesn't stick. Couldn't tell you the last time Morgan Freeman had a hit movie. Doesn't matter. Doesn't stick. I remember the good stuff. Don't worry about it. They're going to blame Westbrook. Crazy old Westbrook. Oh, Westbrook just blew the team up. They're going to blame AD. Guy's brittle. Can't stay healthy. As LeBron chases the scoring title. And that's why this year is valuable for two things for LeBron. Number one, in life, it is very important to find out the people you think you can trust but can't. There's going to be a lot of people in your life you can trust, mostly family. And there's going to be a lot of people in your life you can't trust and you know it instantly. Where you get into trouble is where you think there are people you can trust and you can't trust them. And LeBron has discovered you can't trust AD's body. Can't get to a season. AD will not be a Laker by the end of his contract. They will move him eventually. Because I think LeBron's staying. I think he loves the city. He's got his businesses here. He feels like L.A., L.A. mostly likes him, not as much as Magic, but they like him. He'll be part of the rebuild. And the second thing for LeBron that's valuable is he's going to catch Kareem here eventually, and he's scoring a lot of points. He is still hard to stop. He can still put it on the deck. He's bigger, stronger than 95% of the league. He is still a handful to stop. And that stuff matters. Because if LeBron becomes the all-time greatest scorer, it's another piece of the, that's the best guy ever. And that's great for his brand. Absolutely great for his brand. But it's also been important. Got to figure out who you thought you could trust and you can't. That's AD. Westbrook doesn't matter anyway, way past his prime. But AD signed that long contract because he knew he couldn't trust his body. Now LeBron knows he can't trust it either. And that's got value. So I don't think you shut it down. I don't think you rest your body. I think LeBron understands the value of this season. And he also knows Nobody talks about the bad movies for Marlon Brando. Nobody talks about MJ with the Wizards. And nobody talks about Favre and the Jets. So uh, yesterday, there's there's something rampant happening in our industry. Our industry, I know you're bored with it, so I won't spend any time on it. It's called safetyism. Nobody says anything. Everybody's terrified of people saying mean things on Twitter. And, you know, most people are timid anyway. People don't like controversy for whatever reason. My mom was not really controversial. My dad was kind of stoic. I don't know what happened. Some DNA skipped or something. I got the I don't care what you think about me gene in my family. My dad had the math gene. My mom got the funny gene. I got the Colin doesn't care what anybody thinks about him gene, whatever. And uh, so safetyism now because of social media, everybody now, if they say anything and there's pushback on Twitter, they go run and hide and apologize. I'm going to double down on what I said yesterday. I worry about John Morant. I never said John Morant's not great. I never said he's not amazing. I never said he, he won't win playoff series. I never said he won't win the MVP. I never said he's not tantalizing to watch. He's all those things. 
My point was sustainability. You know, they talk about that a lot with our planet, sustainability. John Morant's sustainability should be a concern. I compared him to John Wall, Westbrook, and Derrick Rose and got much pushback. Oh, no, he's a much different player. He's more well-rounded. I'm sorry, but Westbrook won an MVP because of the triple-double, which is the ultimate sign of balance. That's what you talked about, Oscar Robertson, right? Magic Johnson, right? They could score. They could rebound. They could assist. They could... Don't tell me he's more balanced than Westbrook because you all love that Westbrook won a triple-double. That's why you gave him the award. Didn't give him the award because he shot the best. You gave it to him because of balance. So don't tell me John Morant's way more balanced than Westbrook. He won the damn MVP based on a balance stat. You don't think Oscar Robertson's the best player ever. You brag that he was the first guy that got triple doubles. He could do everything. And Westbrook won an MVP because of that. So don't give me that. I went and got Morant, Derrick Rose, Westbrook, and Wall, the four guys I compared yesterday. They're in, in the third season of their career. It's John Morant's third year. Their minutes are virtually identical. Their points, pretty close. Their three-point percentage, Westbrook and Morant, virtually the same. That's the problem. None are great shooters. All had to attack the rim. And Derrick Rose is 200 pounds. And Westbrook's 205. John Morant's 174 pounds. He's already been dinged up a couple of times. I'm not backing down. This is a sustainability argument. It's not a who's great argument. It's not who's riveting. Derrick Rose is 25 pounds thicker. By year three, John Wall started missing games. By year four, Derrick Rose got banged up. Now, Westbrook is really thick. We talked about that yesterday. I mean, he's, I mean if you're next to Westbrook, he is yoked. Year six for him. LeBron, when was his first injury? Year 15? Year 17? Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, wing players, bigger, stronger, 220, 230, 240. I worry about John Morant. I'll double down on this. I will not back down. The numbers don't lie. He is 117th in the NBA in three-point shooting. Therefore, he has to attack the basket to score. This is not a criticism of him. It is a reality of his game. Now, I think he's much better than John Wall. I really do. Um... But I don't think he's better than Derrick Rose. I think this is exactly what we said about Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was unbelievable. In LeBron's prime, he won MVP. In LeBron's prime, when LeBron was the best player in the world, we went, nah, no, nah, Derrick Rose. We're not, we're not doing that now with John Morant. We like him, but we don't, you know, we're not comparing him to, you know, right now it's Giannis, uh, MB, we don't think he's as good as Kevin Durant. No, in LeBron's prime, you literally would get major pushback. I know I did it if you said, Derrick Rose is kind of small and can't shoot. He's not the most valuable player in the league. He's the most exciting, and that's how I feel about John Morant. He's the most exciting player in the league. I love him. He's an all-star. He's a Hall of Fame talent. He's going to get to the playoffs. He's going to win series. It's great for Memphis. I'm, all check, 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 check. Sustainability is an issue. Go look at that chart again. Derrick Rose had to attack the rim. And it wasn't even as much a three-point shooting league then. You could still do mid-range and not get screamed at. The numbers are very similar. The minutes, and by the way, right now, John Morant, I saw a stat this morning, leads the NBA in points in the paint. Half, over half his points are in the paint. He was 174 pounds. That is 90 pounds less than the people he collides with at the rim. The average NBA center is about 260, 270. So, yes, it's sustainability. It's not a not great argument. It's I've seen this before. The one advantage to being in your 50s, being a sports talk radio host, I've seen everything. And I saw it live. And I lived through it and got criticized for it. But I said it on Derrick Rose. The rest of the world fell in love. I said, you're not winning titles with that. Can't shoot. Little guy attacks the rim. And sure enough, he played LeBron with the Cavs in a playoff series, and LeBron pushed him around in the fourth quarter. LeBron said, I'll take him. Remember that? LeBron's like, I'll take Derrick Rose. And wore him down. And by the end of that series, D. Rose was worn down. John Morant's 25-pound lighter. 174 pounds. Now, I think he could get heavier, but man, when you're running around like John Morant, that weight comes off fast. <laughs> that kid is springy. So it's not a criticism. It's just simply a sustainability argument. 
The same arguments we're having about all sorts of things in the world right now. It's not that they're not great. Can they be sustained? That's the key. And that's the key, really, to being a legend. To being a Kobe. To being a Michael. To be sustainability. How long can you do it? A lot of people get good jobs. Can't keep them. What makes Brady the greatest is not he's the most athletic. His ability to sustain it for so long. His peak for so long. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.